Today I'm going to be going over a basic overview of what bit axes are and how they work. So right here you're seeing four bit axes plugged into a power supply. This video is more for the newer people into the bit axe community that want to learn a little bit more. And today we're going to be going over basically how it works and then getting into some mining. Obviously we have a load of videos on the channel so if you want to check them out please feel free to. So it might seem very daunting at first because this looks like a lot of electrical work that you need to do but most of them don't come off the bat like this. So let's get into how this all works and how these bit axes actually mine Bitcoin and how they have the ability to actually mine Bitcoin. So before that, I'd like to thank the sponsor of this video, Crypto Miner Bros. Since 2018, CryptoMinerBros.com has been the premier site for top tier crypto mining hardware, earning the trust of miners across the globe. The prices displayed on their site cover shipping and DDP straight to your doorstep, ensuring no unexpected costs at checkout. They deliver to over 100 countries and even provide lower invoicing options to help you cut down on customs fees. Payment is a breeze with options like direct bank transfer or cryptocurrencies including Bitcoin, USDT or Ethereum. With over 250 ASIC options, they stock some of the channel's favorites like the Bitax, the Bitax Touch and the Avalon Nano 3S. Join tens of thousands of happy customers who rely on CryptoMinerBros.com for dependable hardware fulfillment, clear pricing and a top-notch service. Check out CryptoMinerBros.com today, link in the description. So right here, as you can see, is a Bitax board. And basically, a Bitax board is the mainframe of the Bitax. And this is what controls the mining and all that stuff. So the reason that these can mine Bitcoin is because they have one ASIC chip in there. So when you're looking at all of these that you see right here, they all have one ASIC chip below those fans that you see there. Now, typically an ASIC will have maybe 200 to 300 chips in there. So they've taken the chips off of there and they put in exactly one in the middle here. And this is an open source project which has been developed by open source miners. And it basically allows you to put one chip in there and start mining Bitcoin with that one chip. Now, remember, the odds are very, very low with a Bitax. They're even very, very low with one ASIC miner. So there has been different iterations of solo miners, but I believe that this is one of the first open source miners that you can actually build yourself. So that's the main appeal of the Bitax is that you can build it yourself. All the design files and where to get the parts are online in the GitHub, and you can put it together yourself if you have the knowledge. So that's why it's been such a big thing is because you can actually do this yourself and a lot of people have been producing them and selling them if you wanna go and buy one. So there'll be links in the description for basically everything if you wanna go buy any of the Bitaxes and there'll be a link to the Bitax website where you can go and find all the vendors for this. So as I said, there is one chip in there and this is normally taken from an ASIC miner. So there's different iterations of the Bitax. This one says 400, which means that it is a Supra. So if you can actually see down in there, if you look at that Bitax, it has 601 on it, which means that it's a Gamma. Now, as you go up in the numbers, they'll have different chips in there. So the Gammas that we just shown then, that will have an S21 chip. I believe that these have an S19 chip. So that's the Supra. And then there's a Ultra and a Max version, which have lower end chips in there. So different hash rates depending on what ASIC chip is in there, either older generation or newer generation. So we actually have a chip here and we'll grab it out of the box. So you can see it here. So this is where the chip would actually go. I've got to get the orientation right. I think it's like that. So this is a chip from an S19 or an S17. I'm not quite sure, but you guys can let me know in the comments. It's for the Supra. And if we focus in there, you can see that that chip basically solders onto there and that can mine Bitcoin at whatever hash rate the chip corresponds to. So for example, in an S21 Pro, there's 350 odd chips 
and those can basically be taken out and put into one of these. They can achieve around 1.2 terahash without overclocking and up to 2 terahash with overclocking. And the odds are very, very low. However, there has been blocks that have been hit by these and that kind of proves that you can mine Bitcoin with just one of these chips that you see there. So this is obviously a blank board. It doesn't have anything on it. It has all the components, but not the chip and the power connectors and the LCDs that you see there. But these are all fully functioning ones that are running currently. These two are off, but you can see that there's a 601 there, a 400, which is the Supra. And this one below here is actually a 204, and that is a max version. And then you have another gamma version there. So even when you have one chip and it's maybe two terahash, let's say for the gamma, the odds are still astronomically low. But you can have a chance to mine Bitcoin with these. There have been other iterations which have way lower hash rates, which the odds are way, way, way lower for those. And some of them debatably aren't even capable of actually mining Bitcoin. But these have been proven to mine Bitcoin and it has spawned a kind of massive revolution in solo Bitcoin mining. We also have other iterations of the Bitax, which have kind of followed on from the Bitax with models that have more than one chip. So as you can see here, just one chip. But these that you have here, this is called a Nerd Q Axe, and that actually has four chips underneath it. So you can see it hashing away there. It's at around 4.7 giga hash on the screen there. So these are all open source miners. If you really wanted to make one or any of these, you can actually go and make it yourself. But let's get into how it actually mines Bitcoin and how it functions. That was kind of the technicalities behind it. For those that are watching that have already got a BitAx and are running it, they probably know all of this, but this is for the beginners that want to get into solo Bitcoin mining with some of these machines. And I think we'll head over to the computer now to kind of show you how it works. We've kind of explained the theory and I'll show you how to connect it to a pool, the power draw and overclocking, things like that. So let's get over to the computer now. And here we are on the dashboard for the Bitax. So if you want to know how to set one of these up, there's loads of videos out there. This is mainly just to show you what it's going to look like and what to actually put in when you get here. So first thing that you're going to see is the hash rate that is displayed here, then the efficiency. So this will correspond to mainly the chip that you're using. Right now, we're currently looking at a gamma, which is from an S21. So the basically most efficient chip that's out there currently. And then you have your shares submitted to the pool. So when you're mining Bitcoin, you're going to submit a certain amount of shares to the pool. And that is going to give you a heartbeat to actually track how many shares you're submitting. But the amount of shares that you submit doesn't really matter when it comes to solo Bitcoin mining. The main thing that matters is the difficulty here. Now, I have a video explaining difficulty. If you want to get further deep into it, it's on the channel. But basically, you want to hit a difficulty that is higher than the network difficulty at current time. So if you're just getting into Bitcoin and you don't know what difficulty is, it's basically a measure of how difficult the computation is on the network to hit a block. Currently, the network difficulty is at 121T. And then if we go back here, you can see that our best difficulty that we've ever hit is 2.04G. So an order of magnitude lower than T. You can kind of see this displayed here. You have the G difficulty down here. So 61, 84, and then it crosses over, once it gets to 1,000, up into the T range. And then before that, you have a M difficulty that you can see here. And that's basically how the difficulty functions as time goes on and more miners come onto the network. It's going to get more difficult to mine Bitcoin. And when it comes to solo mining, you are looking for a difficulty which is higher than 121 T. As I said, there's a bunch of videos on the channel explaining all of this, but this is more of an introductory. Now, when it comes to actually solo mining, you'll want to pick either your own node or you can actually mine to a pool. Most people are going to be mining to a solo mining pool, 
they are not necessarily going to run their own node. And if you're first getting into Bitcoin mining, this is what I recommend because it's way easier than running your own node as a new beginner. A lot of the pools will offer solo. So you can see here, if it says solo, this is a website called Mining Pool Stats. I'll leave it linked in the description. But if it says solo here, that means you're allowed to mine on it solo. Mainly the ones that have lower hash rates are the solo ones because they're all looking for solo blocks. There have been solo blocks in the past. I believe that CK pool have hit one and there's been one on publicpool.io. And the way that it works is you're gonna connect into their node and then you're going to look for blocks on the network by submitting shares with a certain amount of difficulty. And as I said, if you submit a share that is higher than the network difficulty at current time, then most likely you will be getting a Bitcoin block. And this all stems from the fact that you have ASIC chips in there, so they're going to produce a certain amount of hash rate. It just might take a long, long time to find a block. So currently, this is our pool dashboard. We use solohash.co.uk. And we have our wallet in here, total hash rate, best difficulty, which is 2.04, pending shares, that doesn't really matter, and the pending balance if you hit a block, as you can see there. It also displays the block probability. So this is what you're going to want to look at if you're thinking about the amount of hash rate that you have compared to, on a probability scale, how long it will take you to hit a block if you kept hashing that for X amount of years. So when you're looking at the probability, this is basically saying daily you have a one in 825,000 chance, which means if you mine for 825,000 days, most likely you would hit a block with this amount of hash rate, but the difficulty will increase over time and the hash rate will also increase to increase that difficulty on the network. So in 825,000 days, the network difficulty will be way higher than what it currently is. So same thing applies for weekly and monthly. For example, if you want to mine for 27,000 months, then most likely you'll hit a block and same for yearly. So with a total hash rate of 6.74, our chances are that if we mine for 2,262 years, we should find a block in that amount of time. Now it is very luck dependent. You can be submitting shares for way longer than this, but I've explained that in other videos. So you can go check those out on the channel and kind of get familiar with what the Bitax is and how it works in terms of the luck on the network mining Bitcoin. So going back to how you connect it to the pool, basically in the settings of AxOS, there is a stratum host, a port and a user and also a password at the end. So your Stratum host is, in rudimentary terms, the place that you're gonna to connect to, and same with the port. So you're connecting to their node, and then you are mining on their node. When it comes to mining, you want the closest connection to the closest node that you have around here. As I said, you can choose to run your own node and that will give you the quickest connection but a lot of pools are stationed across the world and you can actually use them to submit shares into. And then your Stratum user, which is going to be your Bitcoin address. And this is how the pool actually identifies who to pay out if a block gets hit. So they'll pay out into this address. Normally this user doesn't actually need to be your Bitcoin address. It's just advised that it should be because otherwise the pool will not know where to actually send the Bitcoin that is mined. And then you have a password. So every stratum and port will have a password. Normally it's just X and that will allow you to get into and mining on their node. So overall, the Bitax is an open source solo miner and you can mine Bitcoin with it due to the fact that it has those ASIC chips that can achieve, in theory, a difficulty that is higher than the network difficulty. As I have mentioned, the probability is very, very low. This is a very rudimentary kind of introduction into Bitax and Bitcoin solo mining. So if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below 
and I can try direct you to different videos that we've made that could give you more information. As I said, it's just to get you into it and interested and then hopefully you go down the rabbit hole and you start mining or getting one of these and contribute into a decentralized network. Because at the end of the day, solo mining, at least this open source kind of chapter of solo mining is basically to try and decentralize the Bitcoin network. It's heavily centralized into mining pools currently because the network difficulty is so high. So the aim overall is to hit more blocks with open source miners or solo miners, because that's going to actually decentralize the network more over time. Just to give you a brief overview, you can kind of see this here. Foundry Digital has 29% of the hash rate, which means it's mining most of the blocks. Same with Antpool via BTC and F2 pool. They're holding most of the blocks hit. And the main purpose is to kind of shift the blocks into the hands of solo miners and the more bit axes and solo miners that are out there, the more probability that a block will be hit by them. And that should help decentralize the Bitcoin mining network. As I said, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. Very short introduction into Bitax mining. Make sure you like the video and subscribe for more content like this.